thank you, uh, Srinath. And uh, it's still the morning. Uh, good morning to everyone. And I'm glad to be sharing the platform. Uh, manufacturing conventionally has been a very traditional uh, kind of a uh, system, right? And then I'm sharing the platform with IT experts here, which shows that it's changing. I mean, the manufacturing per se is changing and then it's of course getting uh, converging with the IT world, right? So I, uh, I have my presentation, which I'll use uh, uh, while presenting on the digital transformation in manufacturing and then where are we in terms of uh, the overall uh, sphere of activities, right? So if we look at it, you know, it's all, to do with automation, connectivity, and of course, cloud computing. We, we just heard about IoT as uh, uh, pretty an important aspect when it comes to the manufacturing. Everything needs to be connected so that we have the data, which is you know uh, kind of giving us a feedback, and then we are trying to work around it with regards to any decision making, and of course, uh, the, the overall system integration. So. I mean, as a country, it's uh, we, you know, Shrinath, Nidhi, and Shashi, everybody has been talking about the, uh, you know, the digital progress, what we have. Uh, to start with, I would say in manufacturing and in general for India, it's it's a very sweet, sweet spot we are in right now, uh, as far as manufacturing is concerned, right? And, uh, you know, with regards to our demographics we have in India, uh, the, one of the largest working population we currently have, which is going to be there for the next two decades as well, but obviously it means um, skilling, upskilling, reskilling as well, which is uh, going to be the key. And uh, the population itself, the consumption is going to increase and which is going to give more opportunities to us plus the export sector. Uh, since we are in the digital adoption uh, you know, uh, platform right now, uh, uh, Aadhaar, of course, is, that's the largest uh, you know, uh, ID program in the world, which has been adopted by India, very successful. Uh, we are number two in terms of you know the downloads and then the apps downloads and then the smartphone users in the world, which is definitely showing that we as a country are adopting it very well. So the question remains, where does manufacturing come in here, right? And uh, uh, with regards to manufacturing, I would still say SME still contributes over ninety percent of the manufacturing uh, in in India. There's a number of manufacturing, you know, it is, and then which contributes about 35% to the overall GBA uh, and uh, about 45 to 50% as for the data in terms of exports, which means this is a critical mass. This is a critical mass along with the large corporates we have to work with. And uh, I'm sure uh, with regards to the government policies, uh, we definitely are not looking at only government to chip in with. Uh, a lot of uh, policies here, but then as a private sector enterprise, we would be working very closely with the government as well as uh, the institutes in, in bringing in a lot of change in terms of manufacturing to grow in this country, right? Uh, Make in India, Digital India uh, has been uh, definitely a big push for the manufacturing to come in here. Uh, I, I talk about 5G before I go to the PLI scheme. Uh, of course, 5G interaction would uh, bring in reduced latency. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of, and then that could obviously create a lot of uh, critical application we can uh, work uh, in terms of uh, the manufacturing. So lastly, when I talk about PLI, that's about 14 odd, uh, you know, sectors have been introduced in this. Um, Shrinath, you were right in, in stating this is more of an incentive to bring in the facilities here, to bring in uh, the large factories for exports. Yes, there's a lot of still a lot of things need to be done uh, in terms of the manufacturing going ahead. Uh, finally, when I speak about the you know the sweet spot, every uh, corporate or every you know country is still looking at another alternate to the world supply chain, and India definitely uh, stands a big uh, good chance here. So, so if you look at the ingredients for digital manufacturing, I think. Uh, Shashi and Nidhi spoke about it. That's very critical when it comes to the digital infra that obviously is needed uh, for manufacturing to grow uh, in terms of you know the connectivity and the digital uh, skill development, upskilling, and then not just this, but even the reskilling is is uh, is important because there are a lot of changes happening across in the IT world, right? And uh, the connectivity and uh, everything. We also in the manufacturing world need to be. Uh, aware of it, and then we need to adopt it as quickly as possible so that we can seek the benefit out of it. So today, uh, to a large extent, I talk about uh, what is the step towards uh, you know uh, the digital manufacturing. Uh, of course, flexible automation and the traceability 
and it is important with regards to uh, where we really want to be as a manufacturing nation uh, from roughly about 15% of the GDP, which is uh, contributed to the manufacturing to 25%, which is the intent. Uh, there's still a lot of work which we need to do. And then I, I believe the, uh, we're in the right direction right now. So we look at a typical manufacturing platform. Uh, most of us are aware of, right? So equipment layer and the control layer is what manufacturing has traditionally been uh, you know, working on in, in the factory floor. Uh, we have a shop floor and then there is a controlling layer where we work and, and that's primarily at the edge or at the factory space itself mm -hmm. so which is primarily we call it as a physical world right and moving on to the industry four you know there has to be a convergence of uh, the digital and the virtual world but then we need a uh, kind of a networking layer you know the kind of ethernet solution we need some routers uh, as hardware i talk about the hardware part here and and of course we we have a uh, a management layer in terms of the softwares, which actually is giving uh, some kind of a decision making uh, 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 inputs to the management to take into consideration. And then, of course, data analysis and optimization, which is to do with cloud computing, AI, and this thing. This is where I believe uh, you know uh, the convergence has to really happen between the manufacturing and uh, the digital. So when we talk about it uh, from the India perspective, uh, we uh, definitely see it as an opportunity for us growing uh, over the next 10, 20 years uh, with uh, you know uh, with an with an alternative being looked at in terms of supply chain, uh, with our own consumption being base being high. I would say the network uh, availability or the network strength is the key uh, in terms of digital adopt adoption, even for the fact you know factories and the shop floor. Uh, 5G, we already spoke about, but then uh, to have the affordable, strong network in tier two, tier three, and the villages is important because our SMEs are, or MSMEs are even actually spread across. We, you know, we obviously we're looking at the industrial clusters now, but then a lot of these uh, MSE, MSMEs and SMEs need to be catered with uh, the technology with regards to, uh, you know, the network as well. I would uh, uh, commend, you know, the government of India right now, uh, though we're moving into the 5G platform, but then we are also working in terms of bringing in the 4G through the BSL, BSNL now in terms of T2, T3, and even the villages. That would definitely help, uh, you know, the manufacturing also to uh, uh, take the benefit out of that. Another important aspect, uh, of course, is uh, we're looking at the, uh, you know, a lot of industrial apps right now. Uh, primarily looking at the AR and VR, which is still the very nascent stage in terms of manufacturing. We all talk about it, but uh, in term in in the manufacturing sphere, uh, uh, but then the adoption is still very very slow. You know, I mean, we we spoke about it uh, before the session, uh, but then the things are changing. Yes, uh, you know, we are looking at AR and VR tools for operation and repair, maintenance manuals, uh, you know, trainings uh, to the workforce at the shop floor. Uh, predictive maintenance is something which is uh, which has been there uh, for quite some time. That was on the hardware side, but then now we're actually uh, you know bring it closer to uh, the digital by using the ML uh, machine learning uh, algorithms and all. And that's where you know uh, the uh, the collaboration with, between the IT and the OT will be the key going ahead. And of course, uh, mm -hmm. data centers, as uh, you know, Shashi just pointed out, the the uh, you know, there's a lot of data being generated, a lot of data need to be uh, looked into, uh, and the data centers are coming in, but then they're high energy guzzlers, right? And we need to have uh, some kind of mechanism to at least to start with, see where is the energy being consumed in the factory, in the, you know, uh, space wherein we're working. So, and then, of course, that could really help in even improving the overall uh, total cost of ownership for the factory, as well as the commercial spaces. So with regards to uh, we becoming the nation who is going to be exporting out of India, uh, not just consuming in India, which is currently the case, I think the quality is going to be the key. And uh, right now, even in high-end manufacturing, we see that it is still very much dependent on manual uh, you know, quality checks. So we, we need to go into the auto optical inspection uh, area. We definitely have the hardwares, uh, you know, the multiple agencies or areas wherein we have the created the hardwares, but then 
there is no strong interface right now in terms of you know a lighting or maybe a camera you know or or a software which is uh, you know going to be there which would definitely help and that's where you know probably uh, the institutes and the corporate and even the government can really play a big role and of course uh, going ahead it's going to be the ai usage and uh, the overall ecosystem development needs to be taken care of so having said that uh, since we are going to be connected uh, we are looking at uh, digital which is nothing but you know connecting all your manufacturing processes and uh, systems and uh, getting the data on at the, um, um, on, uh, at the real time uh, there is a definite need of uh, having the secure networks right there has to be uh, strong cyber security regulations uh, we talk about if i if i only consider about the automation uh, from discrete automation or discrete manufacturing to the process manufacturing if we are going there's a real need of uh, securing the networks very strongly and that's where you know i think the government of india has to uh, play a bigger role and then all of us uh, you know from the user perspective need to uh, adhere to it uh, automation uh, yes uh, it's been it's been happening in the sme as well as the large corporates and uh, we need to look at the low cost automation uh, of course uh, and then that's where the uh, corporates like us and the premium institutes, not just the premium, but then we look at even the T2 uh, uh, level institutes to bring in some kind of integrated solutions for specific industry sectors, which can really help, uh, you know, growth. And then, uh, of course, uh, IoT, industrial IoT, of course, this sole uh, structure is not really in terms of uh, the priority, but then you know, all these aspects are important when it comes to the digital adoption in the manufacturing. And uh, I see this I'm taking from the countries outside, not in India. We've seen a lot of these countries which have really grown in uh, the manufacturing over the last 20, uh, two decades and all, have really incentivized the IoT adoption and even the manufacturing, um, uh, you know, in terms of the automation to be uh, brought in not just for the larger uh, enterprises, but even for the SMEs and MSMEs. So this is where probably we need to work a little more harder in terms of uh, bringing, uh, you know, a more maturity to this level. Uh, so finally, I think, uh, uh, you know, we, have, we had the expert really talking about the skill India and then uh, scaling, upscaling and reskilling, uh, but then uh, really commend the summer uh, initiated by the government. It still need to be expanded uh, much uh, beyond because I understand probably it's just at about four or five. Maybe I'm a little wrong, but then uh, that's where we need to bring in more institutes there. And of course, uh, you know, we need to have the initiatives uh, to establish the desired skill sets. Um, you know, the technology is changing very fast. We need to upskill, rescale, and then uh, you know, I just pointed out that uh, thirty million uh, is what is the or 30 percent of the engineering, engineering uh, graduates 30 percent of the engineering graduates are you know employable which is uh, definitely a concern though we have uh, a lot of our engineering graduates coming out of uh, the colleges so i mean this is uh, manufacturing is getting closer to the it world so it and ot convergence is really happening um, across and that's going to really take us uh, forward uh, to this is more of a pictorial in terms of how do we see the factory of the future? You know, we can see here, uh, you know, the blockchain, blockchain technology in the, you know, supply chain, uh, primarily, uh, you know, using the track and trace, which is very important. And uh, of course, the IR, uh, VR, AR, and the sensors, and of course, uh, you know, the, the logistics portion. So finally, uh, uh, to conclude my, uh, you know, discussion on this, I would say there are a lot of benefits. Uh, to start with, uh, when we are going in for automation or digital adoption, I echo what Nidhi just pointed out. It's actually increasing uh, the number of jobs uh, in the industry. Uh, the only difference is the quality of job is different. Uh, we need to have the proper skilling for all our workforce, uh, whether at the shop floor or even at the middle uh, management level. Uh, and then we're going to be competitive uh, globally. Uh, the PLI schemes is a uh, is a good platform, but then we still need to be, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, being able to export to the other countries, different in the different industry sectors. We still need to be competitive for a longer time in terms of efficiency, productivity, 
the area usage while we are actually making a uh, manufacturing unit. And of course, it enhances the overall profitability right from you know the suppliers to the larger corporates, and then of course, uh, going ahead. And then uh, finally, uh, if we are growing as a nation, I'm sure there would be a lot more investments come in uh, going ahead. And just to give a final uh, example before I conclude this, um, in our cop in our organization itself, we are committed to uh, a pretty large investment in uh, Tamil Nadu uh, state. Uh, more than 100 acres of uh, you know the SEZ and the domestic tariff area production lines have come in already. We're setting up uh, an RD facility in uh, Bangalore for software, firmware, and hardware uh, engineers, and not just software, uh, which will be housing more than 2,000 engineers in the next uh, five to seven years time frame. So, so that's all from my end, and uh, thank you, thank you for the opportunity once again uh, to the policy circle, and uh, thanks for listening.